At 0602 hours, a Russian Mi-8 helicopter lifted off from a forward operating base in northeast Ukraine, carrying a full squad of assault troops toward Ukrainian positions. The morning flight had been routine so far, low altitude, following roads, avoiding radar coverage. But unknown to Russian pilots, three Ukrainian FPV drone operators had been waiting in the fog since 0400, their modified racing squads armed with RPG warheads. In exactly 23 minutes, they would attempt something nobody had ever done before. Thanks to the help from Ukrainian partisan spotters, those three drone operators felt their phones buzz simultaneously with the aggregated message. The operators had spread out to cover the three main routes the helicopter might take, one watching the M03 highway, another covering the northern farm roads, the third position near the Southern River Valley, because missing this chance meant those assault troops would reach Ukrainian positions. Thankfully, the Ukrainians could rely on this acoustic network that had been deployed weeks earlier. The system communicated through low-ray, long-range wireless protocol that sends tiny data packets up to 10 kilometers on less power than an LED light bulb, perfect for battery-powered sensors that needed to hide for weeks in modified smartphones with external microphones hidden in everything from trash bins to fake rocks, each one listening for the distinctive low-frequency thump of helicopter rotors. When a helicopter flies overhead, each sensor records the exact millisecond the sound arrives. And since sound travels at 343 meters per second, the time difference between sensors reveals the helicopter's position through triangulation. The MI-8's twin turboshafts create a unique acoustic fingerprint at 20 to 40 hertz that penetrates fog and forest canopy where radar and visual systems fail. These sensors, powered by solar charge batteries and communicating through the same low-ray network as the Partisans, could track a helicopter's path to within 50 meters at 5 kilometers range. The system was essentially Shazam for military aircraft listening to the sky and identifying threats by their sound alone. The first sensor detected rotor beats, a characteristic spike in the 35 hertz range. Within seconds, two more sensors confirmed it, their time difference calculations triangulating the helicopter's position to within 50 meters. The Ukrainian operator covering the MO3 highway immediately launched his spotter drone while the northern operator checked his acoustic sensor feed, nothing yet on his route. The southern operator near the river began calculating intercept angles for all three possible paths, knowing they'd have seconds to react once the helicopter's direction became clear. The lead pilot checked his tablet where acoustic sensors were already painting a picture. The morning air had formed a temperature inversion, cold air trapped under warm, bending sound waves back toward Earth like an atmospheric amplifier. The MI-8's distinctive rotor beat would carry 5 kilometers instead of 2, and three sensors were already triangulating its position. The helicopter was following the MO3 highway at 150 kilometers per hour, 40 meters altitude, using visual navigation because any radio emission would trigger Ukrainian missiles and GPS was nothing but static from both sides jammers. The mathematics of interception were brutal but not impossible. The MI-8 would stay low to avoid radar, follow roads to avoid getting lost, and maintain steady speed to conserve fuel. If the drone operators could predict its path and position their birds ahead of it, and if a dozen other variables went right and nothing went wrong, they might just make history. The lead operator reached for his primary drone while the others began repositioning based on the acoustic data. The northern operator packing up to move south, the southern one holding position as backup, knowing they had perhaps eight minutes to solve an equation nobody had ever solved before. The lead operator's primary Shrike 10 drone sat on the grass, a Frankenstein marriage of Chinese racing components and Soviet explosives that refused to consummate. The PG-7M warhead was connected to the flight controller through a piezoelectric trigger, essentially a lighter crystal that would generate voltage on impact. But during its several months-long storage, moisture had corroded the handmade connection. These weren't weapons from some defense contractor. They were garage-built munitions, held together with zip ties and determination, where every soldier joint was a potential failure point and every battery connection a prayer to the Electron Gods. While he worked to fix the drone, the acoustic network was painting an increasingly urgent picture. Contact bearing 285 degrees, speed 150, altitude 40, K-1, 
came through his earpiece from the acoustic team, their three sensors constantly recalculating the helicopter's position based on rotor noise Doppler shift. The MI-8 had turned off the MO-3 onto a dirt secondary road, still heading northwest at 150 kilometers per hour, now only 7 kilometers from Ukrainian forward positions. This wasn't the expected path. The helicopter should have continued straight on the MO-3, but something had spooked the pilot into taking the scenic route. The morning fog that had been patchy was consolidating into a wall rolling off the Dnipro River, swallowing everything below 60 meters. In two minutes, that helicopter would be invisible to every sensor except sound, and sound alone wouldn't give them the precision needed for an intercept. The second operator, who had been covering the northern route, was already relocating his drone to a new intercept point when his controller disconnected. The cold had drained his remote battery to nothing. Cursing, he swapped in his backup battery pack wrapped in hand warmers while the helicopter gained another kilometer. The backup drone was everything the primary wasn't. Inferior battery life, shorter range, but most importantly, working. The 3S Leapro battery would give maybe eight minutes of flight in the cold air that was already showing six degrees Celsius on his phone. The video transmitter managed one watt compared to the primary's two watts, meaning the signal would start breaking up at five kilometers. But Ukraine engineering had a motto, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. He secured the faulty connection with superglue that would probably melt from motor heat, but might last long enough, then switch to the backup while precious seconds ticked away. The third operator was already airborne, racing toward a predicted intercept point when his video feed turned to gray static. The fog had swallowed his drone at 0618, flying blind on instruments that didn't exist. Using only compass heading and mental math, he tried to maintain course while the fog created a whiteout condition. Water droplets just don't block visual light. They scatter infrared wavelengths and create acoustic shadows where sound bends around moisture pockets. For 90 seconds that felt like hours, his drone flew through milk soup while he stared at screens showing nothing but electronic snow. Acoustic has him bearing 290, turning more westerly. The voice in his earpiece updated, helping him adjust his blind flight path. Physics, however, doesn't lie when you know the constraints. The helicopter couldn't climb above the fog without entering radar coverage. It couldn't deviate from the road without risking collision with power lines that aren't marked on any Russian map. The acoustic team was now feeding constant updates. Target speed steady, maintaining 40 meters, following the secondary road. They had him right where they wanted him. The lead operator launched his backup drone into the fog flying on pure calculation toward where geometry insisted the helicopter must emerge. His battery showed 75% and falling faster than predicted. Cold air increases internal resistance in Lipro batteries. Behind him, the Russian Boriso Glipsk-2 had detected the drone launch. Its operators now actively scanning the spectrum, trying to isolate the control frequency. But the Express LRS system, an open source drone control system that hops across frequencies up to 500 times per second, making it nearly impossible to jam because by the time you find its signal, it's already moved to a different channel. The MI-8 burst from the fog exactly where they predicted at 0621 hours, still following that dirt road like a train on invisible tracks. The spotter drone confirmed visual, but celebration turned into calculation as the lead operator checked his battery, 60% remaining with three kilometers to cover. His drone maxed out at 100 kilometers per hour. The helicopter cruised at 150. Chase was impossible, but interception, predicting where it would be and getting there first, that was just math. Hard math with no margin for error, but still math. The lead operator's drone reached the ambush point at 0623, battery flashing 40% in angry red digits that counted down like a doomsday clock. He positioned it five meters above a field beside the road, rotors barely turning to conserve power, each percentage point now representing seven seconds of flight time in the cold air. Through analog video transmitted at 5.8 gigahertz, chosen over digital because its 20 millisecond latency beat digital's 100 millisecond delay when milliseconds meant hitting or missing. The world looked like watching combat through a kaleidoscope filled with static. The other two operators were now in position as backup, their drones hovering at different points along the road in case the first attempt failed. 
Russians near the front line had heard the drone's distinctive buzzing sounds and had radioed in they were airborne. Meanwhile, the Borisoglebsk-2 crew was still actively hunting for the drone's control signal, their spectrum analyzer showing ghost signals across multiple bands. However, the Russians knew something was happening, but were unable to find the frequency-hopping spread-spectrum transmission that jumped across 50 channels per second. The Russians had learned to jam standard drone controls that stay on one frequency, like blocking a single radio station. But the Ukrainians had switched to Express LRS, which is like having a conversation while constantly switching between 50 different phone lines every second. By the time the Russians find which line you're on and try to cut it, you've already jumped to a different one. To anyone trying to listen in, it sounds just like random static. The electronic warfare operators could see something was there, like hearing whispers in a crowded room, but couldn't isolate it enough to jam. The sound reached the Ukrainians first through the acoustic network, that distinctive synchronous beat of the MI-8's five-blade rotor chopping air at exactly 192 RPM, growing louder but giving no precise distance in the fog's aftermath. 30 seconds out, the acoustic team reported, their triangulation now precise to within 50 meters. The helicopter was running without lights, without radio, essentially blind and deaf to electronic threats, which made it equally blind to the drone hovering in its path. Then the sun broke through for an instant, catching the helicopter's canopy glass, a flash that gave position, altitude, speed, everything. The MI-8 was 300 meters out, 40 meters altitude, 10 seconds from passing directly overhead. Its pilot focused on the road ahead instead of checking the one direction Soviet doctrine never taught them to fear, below. At 0624, the MI-8 passed overhead and the operator shoved his throttle forward, all four motors pulling maximum amperage as the drone climbed vertically into the helicopter's rotor wash. The turbulence hit like an invisible fist, spinning the drone in three axes, while the operator fought to maintain orientation through a video feed that was now more static than image. The closure rate was agonizingly slow, 50 kilometers per hour, the helicopter pulling away even as the drone climbed. But the operator had done this 10,000 times in simulators, racing through abandoned buildings where one mistake meant starting over. Here, one mistake meant history wouldn't be made. The second operator watched through his drone's camera, ready to attempt his own intercept if first failed, while the third maintained overwatch to document whatever happened next. From the drone feed, it's unclear if the Russians ever saw the drone coming, but it is very clear what happened next. Impact at 0625. The shape charge detonated instantly, copper jet punching through everything because the PG-7N warhead contained physics that hadn't changed since its invention but remain devastating. At detonation, the Monroe effect takes over, where a cone-shaped explosive cavity lined with copper becomes a focused jet of molten metal traveling faster than orbital velocity. 8,000 meters per second of liquefied copper that could penetrate 300 millimeters of rolled steel armor, while the MI-8's aluminum skin measured just two millimeters thick. Within seconds, the entire helicopter was engulfed in flames as it crashed into a field below. The spotting drone that had been maintaining safe distance swooped in and recorded the video you see here confirming the strike. The Russian EW vehicle, still trying to jam frequencies that weren't there, wouldn't learn about the loss until the emergency beacon activated. By then, the Ukrainian drones were already gone, their operators packing up to move before artillery arrived. A $500 drone built from hobby parts, guided by a partisan network that outsmarted million-dollar electronic warfare systems, had just achieved what military planners deemed impossible. This wasn't luck or accident, but the culmination of garage engineering, mathematical prediction, and courage linking together in a chain that ended with the first confirmed FPV versus helicopter engagement in military history. Bye for now.